Hi, my name is Chelsea Conlow, and I'm here to present joint work with Nick Mathewson and Ian Goldberg. And today I'll be presenting our work, Walking Onions, Scaling Anonymity Networks While Protecting Users. So our work uses Tor as a case study. And if you're not familiar with Tor, uh, Tor is a privacy enhancing tool that allows users, millions of users around the world to use the internet privately and to circumvent censorship. And how are users able to do that? Well, in order to access information say from this server, a user will create a path through the network in order to route their traffic. And in order to do so, all users download what we call the consensus. And this consensus is essentially the state of the network and it has entries for every single relay in the network along with some network parameters. And this consensus is authenticated by Tor's directory authorities, which users trust by default. And so to create this path through the network, the user first selects one relay from the consensus. And they do this by sampling this relay at random, but where all relays are weighted by the amount of bandwidth that they contribute to the network. And then the user creates a circuit by performing a key exchange with that relay. And then the user selects the next relay in the hop and asks the first relay to forward uh, their request and response to this relay. And then finally, they randomly sample a third relay in order to complete their path and create what is this circuit, which allows them to forward traffic to the destination server on the other side. So in this model, um, Tor favors security over scalability. And what do we mean by that? Well, there's two attacks that we have in mind uh, that are relevant to our work. And the first is that of epistemic attacks. And that means that users with different views of the network can be distinguished by their relay selection. So if some, were, if some users were more likely to select certain relays over others, adversaries looking at the network would be able to distinguish these users. But Tor protects against that because all clients maintain the same up-to-date consensus. So all clients are equally likely to select uh, these relays. And the second attack that we have in mind when we say this is route capture attacks. And that is when an adversary can influence users' relay selection. But Tor protects against that because uh, clients maintain this consensus, which is authenticated by the directory authorities. And this consensus contains relays signing keys. And so clients are able to verify the responses from these relays using these keys. And all of this chains up to this root of trust. So what contributions do we make with walking onions? First, uh, in current tour, because all relays or all clients maintain this consensus, as new relays join the network, that means that this consensus grows and therefore client bandwidth uh, requirements also grow. But in Walking Onions, we reduce client bandwidth overhead to constant size, even as new relays join the network. Secondly, uh, even though we do uh, reduce client overhead, we still maintain Tor's existing security model. So we present two variants. One has no change in Tor's model. The other has a slight weakening in forward secrecy, but only for the selection of relays in the path, not actually for content that is sent. Um, we demonstrate that there's immediate performance improvements at networks the size of Tor today. And some of the design choices of Walking Onions apply to network designs beyond Tor. So we'll do a deep dive now looking at walking onions and we'll answer three questions. One is how to represent relay information to enable what we call oblivious selection of relays. And then we'll look at how to use this oblivious relay selection and verification to build paths through the network for clients. And then finally, we'll look at how can we perform even more efficient circuit construction. So first, let's look at how to represent relay information. So as we said, the current consensus in Tor today consists of a set of relay entries representing all relays in the network and a constant size amount of network parameters. And this consensus is authenticated by Tor directory authorities. In Walking Onions, we take these same relay entries, but we add two additional values. One is an authentication tag computed by Tor's directory authorities. And the second is an index range. And this index range represents this particular relay over distribution for all relays in the network. And this distribution can be weighted by certain factors. So for example, in the case of Tor, uh, you might want to again weight relays relative to the amount of bandwidth that they contribute to the network. 
but we can imagine other properties um, being weighted for this index range as well. And so um, all relay entries become SNPs, and all SNPs, uh, along with another authentication tag, com comprise an endive. And importantly, only relays in Walking Onions download this endive. Clients do not. In fact, clients only need to download this network parameters document, and therefore their growth, even as new relays join the network, remains constant. So now let's look at how can we build paths using what we call oblivious relay selection, meaning that the client doesn't know the state of the network because they don't know the consensus, but they still need to select relays for their path. So in our first variant, which we call telescoping walking onions, clients begin by bootstrapping to a relay. And we describe further in the paper how this bootstrapping process happens, but it uses some out of band mechanism. So the client knows about this first relay and is able to perform uh, the first step in circuit construction very similarly to in Tor today. However, when selecting the second relay in their path, the user just samples some index completely at random uh, within the distribution that we described earlier. And to determine the next relay in the hop, once the first relay gets that index, it finds a SNP that contains uh, the client's choice within its index range, and it extends the path to that relay. And then in returning the relay's response to the client, the first relay also can returns the SNP uh, corresponding to the client's choice. And what that means is that the client can verify that their random index that they sampled is within the index range for that relay. And they know that this information is authentic because it contains an authentication tag computed by the directory authorities. So the client is essentially able to perform post hoc uh, validation of their choice for the relay in the path. And the third hop in the path is computed exactly the same. So importantly, the client doesn't need to know the full consensus, but it can still determine the relays for its path without influence by any intermediaries. So now let's look and see how even more efficient circuit construction can be performed. So we're not gonna go into too much detail for this variant, which we call single pass, but the intuition behind this variant is that actually the client doesn't even need to compute this random index themselves. They just need to know that the relays sampled for their path are chosen at random over this distribution, and we're not influenced by any kind of intermediary. And in order to perform that, we actually use VRFs. So VRFs determine the second and third hop in single pass walking onions, and then the client verifies the proof produced by the VRF to ensure that their choice is actually at random over the distribution that they expect and that the SNP uh, is valid, again, similarly to within telescoping. So with that, um, we know that walking onions protects against epistemic and route capture attacks because the clients can verify the content within the SNPs, and they know that they're equally as likely to select certain relays as every other client. But how do we know that walking onions actually improves the performance of anonymity networks like Tor? Well, happily, our simulations show that it does. So looking at the graph to the right, this vertical black line shows a network the size of Tor today of about 65,000 relays. And so for relays, we show that walking onions saves four to six times the bandwidth over vanilla onion routing. And when we say vanilla onion routing, we mean the onion routing protocol that is used in Tor today. And even more exciting is that as the network size grows, this savings to relays just further increases. So we see an improvement of 20 to 40 times less bandwidth um, for an overhead for relays at a network 10 times the size of Tor. Um, and for clients, this picture is even better. So again, looking at the graph to the right where that vertical black line is, that is the size of a network, um, the size of Tor today. And we see that clients in Walking Onions save 10 to 15 times the bandwidth for vanilla onion routing for a network the size of Tor. And um, even more exciting is that in a network 10 times the size of Tor, clients save 90 to 150 times the bandwidth over vanilla. 
So again, the improvements for walking onions just compound as the network size grows. So what are the takeaways for this talk? First of all, we know that the design of Tor today imposes overheads to clients as the network scales. And this is because in Tor today, all clients maintain this consensus. And as new relays join the network, the size of the consensus grows. And therefore, um, as the network scales, the bandwidth overhead to clients becomes worse. However, walking onions removes this per relay bandwidth and storage. And the reason why it does that is because clients no longer need to maintain the consensus locally. They just need to maintain this constant size uh, network parameters document, and they're able to verify the integrity of their path in a post hoc manner. Um, but walking onions does offer the same security protections against epistemic and route capture attacks. And we saw that in that clients can verify the integrity of the SNPs that are returned, and they can also be sure that their selection of relays is not biased or different from any other client in the network. And something that we're really proud of is that Tor has already begun the specification work to integrate walking onions into the Tor protocol. Um, and you can find even more information about this in our paper and artifact at this URL here. Thank you very much.